right. So the, I think the one thing that we should definitely cover Let's on, talk about healthcare. on healthcare, yeah, is just how many people are uninsured in the area that I've been speaking with. Like it is huge networks of folks because I'll talk to them at the door and kids, you know, who are 14 are telling me and translating for their parents. They're like, yeah, we're uninsured. Um, and so are all my friends. Yeah. And it's, it's surprising when you hear a student say that, but it's, it's on their minds enough that even the students are kind of like, yep, yeah, we're, we're uninsured in this community. My friends are and healthcare. I started to look into it because some people are like, yeah, it costs me $740 a month to insure me and my, my sibling or me and my spouse. I'm like, wow, that's a, did not know because I'm 22 and I'm still on my parents' plan. I was like, that's a lot of money. And then I started to add that to the yeah. child care and then I added that to the rent and it's like, oh my gosh, if you're making a minimum wage, like some of these caregivers are or yeah. other physicians. And you're, and you're paying out of that. Yeah. There's no savings. Yeah. No, I mean, there's debt. Not yeah, only is there no savings, there's debt. There's yeah, debt. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I think... Um, so in a sort of immediate service perspective, let's just start with, I think that I shared with you, but if I didn't, I can, where people should go to see what the state can do to help. Yeah. Y you do have that. Is that Maryland Health Exchange, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you, is that something that you... I don't know how to distribute it, given that it's kind of... Because it's online. Because it's online. I mean, but I can also, like, I can guide people to it, but even then, people are often uninsured because of the price. They can't pay. Uh, right, right. But I think the first thing is that, that what that... If you don't know, now you know, kind of thing. And what yeah. that is supposed to do, and hopefully it is, okay. is figure out what any subsidies might be available for you. I think that's okay. the really important piece of it. Okay, I didn't know that that was yeah, part it, of it. Okay. It, sh it should, if you put in information, we could look at it together maybe cool. next time. But next time, yeah. um, I'll study it. Let's just study it. I think what it's designed to do is not just like look at what you could get, but also support you to figure out what subsidies are available, what public programs, those That's kinds really of things. Helpful. So if it doesn't do that, there's something else that does and I will find it for okay. you. So I think it's that, but yeah. if that's not it, then that would be an that. incredible resource. Have you been to, like, have you poked I around? Checked, yeah, I poked around Maryland Health Exchange. I did not know that that was a part of it. Um, but it could be because I put in my information and my parents' information, they already have health care and mm -hmm. they wouldn't qualify. All right, let's um, take a look at that because I'm pretty sure there's some place where that Would be a great happens. resource too because so, like I said, this is just, it's folks and folks yeah. and folks. And, and you really want to know, you know, like, um, and it may be something where someone could get a certain subsidy even if they're, you know, they're not necessarily eligible for Medicaid, but there's certain subsidies that could support paying some cost of, right. of their insurance and we Any definitely want to find cool. find all that out. Um, CHIP, for sure, for the the... The, no children should be uninsured because mm -hmm. um, CHIP should be able to cover um, that's the children's health insurance plan. I wonder if people know sometimes because they they talk about how their insurance is expensive. A lot of people don't mention CHIP to me. I actually haven't heard it mentioned once. Um, and people do mention other programs. Like so people have talked about WIC. Um, yeah. But I haven't heard people talk sure. about it. So, well, let's look. And if you can't find it, I'll take a look with you or I'll call our folks at the Department of Health and okay. we'll make sure that you have something real specific that talks about CHIP, talks about... Because, um, I, I mean, I know I have constituents who they themselves couldn't get insurance. They couldn't afford it for themselves, yeah. but they've got it for their kids through CHIP, through chip even yeah. though they weren't going to be eligible through... So um, I can't off the top of my head say what the various yeah. eligibility is, but I know yeah. that that's possible. So we should yeah. make sure that we're, we're connecting that to folks. That's good because I've heard... One of the scariest things I've heard is people do the dance between rent insurance it's terrifying and, and then like, wait until I'm take a month off of my insurance i'm gonna pay this and, well and we talked to someone who had that and then right we one yeah, of the people we spoke to it was during that sort of month off that she ended up in the hospital and now she's being sued right that that's fifteen thousand medical debt yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That was so so we should get we should figure that piece of it i always feel like i can't let an interview about health care go by without saying that very clearly the long term has got to be a single payer medicare for all system Ideally at the federal level, potentially at the state level. I mean, there are, it's much more challenging, but it's worth, and there are people who are looking at, there's a legislature, um, I actually just heard that, uh, I think someone's introducing it in the Senate this year. Um, so really that is where we have to go. I see. Um, to solve this, this, this system that we have right now yeah. and the band-aids we put on it just, mm -hmm. just are not sufficient. So, um, so that's kind of big picture. I will say there also are a few other things that are starting to happen. One of them is this year, um, when people check the, um, on, on people's, uh, income tax, um, there's a question about insurance and people can check on that question and they can, 
and they will be then, if they don't have insurance, be yeah. given information with their filing or something. Um, mm -hmm. They'll be Good. given information about how to yeah. how to get insured. That's also helpful. That's new this year. Um, some of the things that we're hoping that you can get to folks. Cool accessibility um, resources. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of bills that again try to work on um, elements of this. So we have mm -hmm. some bills. We had some bills last year on, um, on prescription drug affordability. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably have more around that um, this year, uh, as I have shared at some point. I have a bill. Of, I have a, a there's sort of companion bills. Delegate Lewis has a bill that's related for to financial assistance mm -hmm. plans in the hospital yeah. um, and getting hospitals to really make sure that so when so, if somebody does end up in the hospital or some uninsured yeah. ends up in the hospital that the hospital has done everything yeah. they can to see if that person is eligible for a financial assistance plan. Um, that's very cool. So that's that's her bill, and then my bill is sort of the companion bill because people who don't have that then end up with the debt. My bill is a companion bill, and it puts real some guardrails around how yeah. hospitals can go after yeah. debt. But speaking of wages, there's a specific group of people in the education and child care. Okay, yes, care. I was shocked to learn that caregivers make, on average, just about the minimum wage, mm -hmm. like in Montgomery County. And I was like, okay, well, that's a that's kind of a big shock because I know so many, you know, like if you go to Donald Silver Spring and you walk around during the day, you'll meet so many people doing caregiving jobs and it seems like such a big part of Montgomery County and something that we kind of value a lot just as a community because there are so many folks with disabilities that people that are getting taken care of or elderly folks that are getting taken care of. But, you know, at the high end, they're making under $20 an hour. So, mm -hmm. um, and I talked to somebody who had been there, she was on the podcast, who had been there for... You know, the hurt. Sorry, I've been where? I've uh, been, been a, a child care provider. A child, child care provider. Uh, not a child care provider, sorry, a caregiver. Um, and uh, she was a, the advocate of the year was on her wall and everything because she had actually gone to the MGA and done advocacy. And she talked about how much of her job is actually like the advocacy portion still, but it's like extra work on top of the 40 hours she does for caregiving because there are so many things that change federally that now she has to like negotiate and go to the offices with the patient, not patients, uh, with the people she's okay, caregiving yeah. and then be mm -hmm. like, Hey, like we, we really need this. Like mm -hmm. if you take us off, we, we won't be able to afford these basic necessities for the person I'm caregiving for. But then mm -hmm. she was like, we need more wages cause we're all, we're all pretty much, uh, living just above the line here. And a lot of people are living in the community. Like when I talk to people who didn't have caregivers in their family, even they're like, oh yeah, this is a big caregiving community. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of the apartments are group homes. Oh, really? Huh? Really? I don't know if that's a, yeah, a lot of them are. Interesting. Uh, what kind of group homes? Like, it's just what they tell me. I don't know what kind of group homes I'm first learning about it now. Like foster care or folks with disabilities? Folks with disabilities. Or... Huh. Yeah. People will, uh, Yorkshire Apartments specifically has a lot of folks that are group homes. I get it all the time. Like, I'll knock a door and they'll be like, oh, this is a group home. And I was like, I still want to know if you have any concerns. Do you yeah, live in the yeah. area? Do they? <laughs> but yeah. Huh. Interesting. No, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so I think, so wait, so what we're talking about this, it's all You're the like interconnection. Interconnected, right? Yeah. It is. It's interesting how, like, the things that, um, well, you know, a, a piece of it actually is the things that have historically been um, sort of are considered more women's work, like caregiving. Um, oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, tend to be paid less; they're valued less by society, even though they're crucial for like our entire lives. Right? All of us have had someone take care of our kids, or our parents, or us, mm -hmm. and clearly they're crucial. And yet. Um, they tend to be some of the lowest lowest paid work. Also, often caregiving tends to be more people of color, which um, you know there's sort of this um, the tend the, like it sort of adds to the um, kind of the, the racial disparity in mm -hmm. wages. Kind mm -hmm. of is playing out in um, in that as well. They also seem to be heavily immigrant immigrant community. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so, like the most precious thing we have, which is like somebody else's life, our children's lives, our lives at some point in our lives, our parents' lives. And uh, it's it's absurd how um, little we're able to or willing to. I mean, one of the other things here is people talking about that they can't afford the child care for their kids, right? I mean, it goes. It's, Big thing. I mean, it's, just, it's more than rent in most cases. Yeah, and so you know, it calls. So, so there's a, there's a number of pieces I think that are that are tied to, to it. So part of it is. Um, 
I think, um, I'm not sure the specifics of what the, the person that you were talking to and the advocacy that she was doing, but um, there was some, um, within the, the I, I think, I'm gonna say this, and I, I may actually have this wrong. I know that last year when we passed the minimum wage, but we increased the minimum wage, mm -hmm. um, some of what we included in that was an increased reimbursement um, for the developmental disabilities community and a couple other sort of caregiving communities where, I mean, then that should give us pause that the amount of money as a state that we are budgeting for those agencies mean that when we increase the minimum wage, we have to give more money because that means they're so close to, they're either getting the minimum wage mm -hmm. or so close to mm -hmm. it. Um, so we put that in and I, I think that the governor, we put that in as a mandated increase and I think the governor didn't put it in his budget. So now we're back in the General Assembly trying okay. to put that money back. We're, we're going to need to find that money because that's a really important piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, I know I did hear from and speak to last year uh, a number of people in the various caregiving communities, disabilities and, and others um, about the need to, um, to make sure that the state was investing enough so that people could be working um, those jobs and earning enough and um, yeah and benefits and so on. So, um, so that's, uh, that's one sort of piece of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think the other part of it is just generally looking at how we, I mean, this comes back to kind of how we structure our entire society, right? So, um, the, the, um, uh, the wealth gap, right? The income gap. And then, you know, the reality that folks at the top of that gap are not paying their fair share. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we if we had an equitable tax structure, if corporations and wealthier folks were paying their fair share of taxes, we would have money for the for the, the um, safety net services, mm -hmm. which in some cases are the caregiver services. Mm -hmm. We'd have money to subsidize child care so that people yeah. could both afford to have it, but also so that the people who were providing the child care yeah. would be, be, be paying, be being paid, yeah. usually poverty wages, mm -hmm. taking care of other people's mm -hmm. children. Um, and also so, so that maybe the threshold for um, for how much you have to make in, in income is the larger. So that's exactly that's right, right. Yeah. yeah. And we actually did, last year we expanded to some extent, but really it's at the sort of very low end of it. We did expand last year in the General Assembly, so the, um, I'd have to look up what, exact, what the exact numbers were, but we did expand the access to what you had to make in order to, to be... Um, eligible for some of those subsidies. We did expand yeah. that last year. Um, but I think it's uh, it's hard to take just sort of one piece out of the rest of the puzzle. And we I have, know, yeah. we have uh, some of the progress that we've made that relates to this. One is the minimum wage, which will be increasing. The other is the paid sick leave from two years ago, which is really important because again, it tends to be in these jobs where people are paid by the hour at very low rates that they can't um, take sick leave to take care of themselves right. um, or family members. Yeah. Um, and so that was a really important piece of it. And this year, um, we have a really important piece of legislation that's also tied to a lot of this, which is, um, um, it's, a, it's called the Time to Care Act. And it's, uh, it sort of creates an insurance fund, essentially, that would allow for paid family leave. Mm -hmm. So to care for a child. Um, oh, at the state level. Mm -hmm. So what happens is over time, an employer and an employee pay into it the way you might mm -hmm. with unemployment insurance. Yeah. Um, and then when you, need, when you have a child and need to take, th you know, three months, you're paid <clears throat> through that period yeah. through this fund. So it's not just a burden on, you know, it's like a shared, like it's a, all of society believes that people are healthier and better yeah. and well equipped if we can care for our children and our family members. And so we create this sort of pooled fund. So it's That's not just cool. if you can yeah. work for Google, then you get paid family leave. And if you, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you can't, then, then you don't, um, which actually ends up being better for small businesses because small businesses, um, I'm a little bit off of childcare, but it kind of is related. No, but I mean, like, it's related. It's, it's yeah. related to this question about how do you make ends meet, right? Yeah. Um, cause small businesses, um, you know, like Google might be able to offer paid family leave, but a small business with 20 employees, yeah. that might be very, very difficult. So yeah. now that small tech business with 20 employees is competing with and losing people to whatever, pick the Google or whoever it is. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, uh, another piece of the thought process is that, um, it's, it also makes, um, takes care of this challenge for small business in the same way that having healthcare, having, yeah. um, uh, universal healthcare would be better for small yeah. businesses because then they're not competing with mm -hmm. their healthcare that they're mm -hmm. able to provide with, uh, you know, some larger company that has the ability to do that. Mm -hmm.